Hello there, this is Gino. Yes, I am a smoker and yes, I'm wearing my Amara hat. Um, happy Canada Day out there and uh, yeah, I'm still enjoying some of my time off. Peter Dirksen, uh, one of our mining partners, has decided to come up for a visit. Say hi, Peter. Hello. Anyways, uh, we're up on my largest claim where we had discovered an ancient adit. Well, ancient being, you know, hundreds of odd years old. Uh, when we discovered it about seven years ago, uh, Morris had uh, seen a story about, uh, you know, an adit that was up here and an old man that he had seen in the 60s coming up here mining every summer. He never wouldn't come down until the end of the summer. And Morris never followed the guy up, but was always curious about what was up here. Well, about seven years ago in the snow, we came up here and uh, we were looking around. We uh, couldn't find the mine sites, and uh, then I uh, noticed this coyote hole. Anyway, we, uh, me, I'm one of those people, if I see a hole, I got to get into it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, I ended up um, taking a look. It was on about a 45 degree angle, so, you know, probably 10, 15 feet down into the ground, so... Tied a rope around my ankle, put a knife between my teeth and shimmied my way down on my elbows down to the bottom and uh, shined my miner's light up in there, my headlamp, and holy crap, man, it was an addict. <laughs> Screamed up to Morris, no animals, it's a mine, and uh, the rest is history. The last seven years, uh, we've excavated probably 120 yards out of this hole. Uh, Morris, believe it or not, the old man, he did most of that because uh, he spent an entire summer here when I was busy building my house and I couldn't mine with him and uh, that's what he did. So anyways, uh, without further ado, uh, Peter, have you got the light ready to go? Yep. Okay, we're going to enter my attic. I'm just going to give you guys a quick shot of the outside here and, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, I got, a, got that whole reverse the camera thing going on again. I might have to film this in two shots, but... Uh, as you can see, it's a bit of a wilderness area. There's a little road down there, but you can hardly see this at it. And then if you look up there, up the hill, you can see way, way, way up there, about 100 yards behind the at it, there's a uh, couple of mine pits that we found. And those were the diggings of the old man Morris saw coming up in the 60s. Uh, there was uh, dozens of yards of uh, crushed ore up there, and uh, we're not sure where he was getting his water from yet. We're still trying to figure that one out. But, uh, yeah, anyways, this is an interesting project, and the reason I'm yakking on about this is, I'm going to be quite frank with you, uh, we've had some incredible assays come out of here. I drilled 44 holes in here, foot and a half deep in arcs every five feet on the uh, length of the attic, total, uh, uh, like I said, 44 holes. Cost us about seven grand to get the assays done, but uh, in the end, uh, we ended up with assays registering uh, 18.7 grams of gold to the yard, um, about 3 grams of platinum, and 10 ounces of silver. So very, very rich ground towards the back of the adit, and uh, some of the lower assays were as uh, little as $200 per yard. Economic ground all the way through. Uh, what we want to do here is, uh, you see the adit there, we want to dig a test trench about 50 yards on either side of the adit and a cross uh, trench at the back of the adit and uh, down to its level. That one will be about 30, 40 feet deep. And uh, we want to basically get an idea for uh, what the mineralization around is in here. Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, Peter's setting up a light. Uh, we're going to uh, try and jerry-rig a little video and talk about mineralization. I'll explain what you see in the adit to the best of my ability and what I know from assay work. Uh, we are looking for an investor, people. Um, I've done some preliminary work uh, estimating. We've got a claim which is approximately uh, 2,000 meters by 2,000 meters, uh, 10 claim cells, uh, each of them 500 meters by 500 meters in size approximately. Uh, we own all the mineral all the hard rock and all the placer rights here. Uh, we have the claim locked up till next year, but we're going to renew it for another five years this year. Um, essentially, we're looking at a uh, crush and haul operation. Uh, we need an excavator, front end loader, a uh, cone crusher, and some slides to hand the ore down to the trucks to the highway, which is about 200 yards away from us. Uh, Investment here, uh, me and Morris, we've got seven years of our time, probably 30 grand or so tied up into it. Uh, we're looking for a buy-in for a one-third partner. Uh, the partner would have to give me and Morris $35,000 to cover our expenses. And uh, 
then if, uh, they would have to bring us through the uh, commercial testing and uh, you know approval phase, get us the permit to have the commercial right to uh, mechanically mine the area. Uh, once we have that, the banks will take over. Uh, we're estimating that investment to be, uh, including the 35 grand we need for the, uh, our share of the claim to let someone buy in, about 130, 160,000 Americans should cover it and get this into a functioning mind. Um, ballpark reserves, uh, if this uh, ore, you know, the testing proves that this ore runs up the hill is in the hundreds of millions of dollars worth of gold, people. This is an opportunity that it's going to take a big guy to do it. So uh, we're a couple of little guys. We scored, we went on a hunch, and we found something good. So if you know someone out there who uh, wants to send a geo out here, uh, we're more than happy to take them, show them our holes, let them take their own samples. Uh, we're not trying to play a game here, you know. Uh, we just want to get this ground developed, but we need some help. So Peter's in there. He's got the lights. Let's head into the tunnel. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut the film here and then I'll uh, splice it together because I need to uh, reverse my camera angle and it doesn't allow us to do that while it's running. Hello everyone, it's Gino again, uh, second part of the video. Peter's got the lights running, let's head into the attic. Okay, now as you enter the attic here, uh, you'll see a lot of spray paint markings, those are me. Uh, what we got here is uh, essentially a balsatic quartz. Uh, we got a mixture of hornblende quartz. Uh, this is a bedrock, but it's been sheared off the top of the mountain and come down in what's called ultramafic flows. This is actually a volcano we're sitting on, or an extinct one at that. And uh, I don't know if uh, I'll get up to the light over here and uh, see if I can't explain a few things. Ow. Yeah, you hit your head a lot in here, by the way. Ah, oh, boy. So, let's see, we got the light here. Please excuse the shaky film or what you can't see. Uh, we're doing our best in dark conditions. That there's a uh, drill hole. You can see the piece of the tag in there. They're all numbered. Uh, they're a foot and a half deep. The uh, black mineralization you're seeing around the rust there, that is manganese. Uh, as we progress through this tunnel, you're going to see that stuff spidering throughout the place. And uh, here, if you take a look at this rock right here, you can see all the quartz, the andesite mixed up, and I don't know if you can see all that quartz in there, but yeah, this is a very quartzy area. Uh, we've used a microscope on this material, and it shows a lot of very, very fine-grained gold. You can see some calcite starting to form on some of these rocks, little fuzzy stuff. Anyways, let's see if I can take you for more of the tour here. Gotta just kind of go slow, bear with me. There's Peter. <laughs> okay. Now, at this stage in the attic, what we have here is, I'm gonna try to show you, our uh, pyroclastic flow. This is all the uh, greenstone that come off the top of the mountain. And as you can see, it uh, all came down and concentrated down just like it does in a river, but it's all angular rock. Not too much gold on this side of the attic, though. Uh, we got some of our poorer assays out of here. But uh, still, I don't know if you can see that black manganese in there, black, and the quartz sticking out right there. But uh, yeah, this stuff here is... Uh, well, actually, I don't know if you can see the glints on there. A lot of... Uh, metallics in these rocks. Uh, we just haven't had a chance to test them. Could be rich. Uh, you can only pay to uh, test so many holes, people. Anyways, let's see if I can get myself turned around here. Okay, now there's more of that manganese there that I was talking about. As we get closer to the back of the tunnel, you'll see more and more of that starting to occur. Uh, manganese is kind of like a, uh, the outer ring of a bullseye, you could call it. When you run into manganese veins, uh, you're going to run into other gold indicators, or cineopyrite, uh, even cinnabar, which is what we do run into here. So there is mercury uh, present in this tunnel, uh, but the temperatures are too low. It's harmless to us at this point. Uh, you wouldn't want to definitely uh, cook your gold in here. Uh, we did find crucibles and stuff. Might explain why the previous miners uh, 
gave up on the place or maybe they uh, just never came back. Who knows? Anyways, again, please excuse the uh, shaky film. We're going to move on down the tunnel here. You find anything interesting while you were looking up there, Peter? Yeah, there was one little piece of quartz that we grabbed. All right. Well, we'll look at anything you want to collect, uh, you know, with the... Uh, might as well take a look at this stuff right here, Peter. See that rock right there? Yeah. Look at that one closely. See the, uh, the, the metallics on it? Yeah. Yeah, very pyrite rich, and that's gold rich pyrite. Uh, that rock, you should probably take it if you want to look at it. I got a gut feeling about that one. Anyways, okay, we're about halfway through the tunnel now, about 30 feet in. And uh, this is where the assays really started to get interesting in the uh, $200 range. As you can see, that manganese starts to become a lot more prevalent. There's a drill hole over there. Uh, another drill hole up there. One up there and one over there. That's how we did it every five feet in the tunnel in an arc. Every. Um, okay. Let's see here. What do we got? What do we got on the side here, folks? Let's take a look. Okay, over here is an interesting section of the attic. Now, this is where I personally think that the uh, previous miners were mining uh, what they were mining. This is where we started getting the really good stuff. Uh, me and Morris have found placer match heads in this area, match head size nuggets. Um, the uh, rock is uh, angular, but uh, we got bedrock over here. Now, during a volcanic event, you have to think, that stuff may be moving at a higher viscosity than water, but it still has the same physical uh, properties. You know, it's uh, things are heavier, things are going to settle to the bottom, and cracks are going to collect the, the, the densest materials. Well, I think that's what happened over here. And I think that this bedrock outcrop here is uh, what they were mining and uh, why they dug a 66-foot tunnel. Uh, and as you can see, again, I want to point out these manganese that's everywhere throughout this rock. Um, yeah, let's move on down the tunnel. Lost our lights. Oh, there it is again. <laughs> okay, here we go. What do we got here? We're at row 2D. This is where the assays really started to get interesting on both sides of the attic. As you can see, that manganese vein runs right through here again. Then we got this rusty layer. And not too sure what that is, but you see that blue mineralization there? I suspect that might be azurites. Hard to say. But uh, we definitely got some copper mineralization going on here. And, uh, yeah, more drill holes. All tagged and bagged. <laughs> um, let's turn around here. Because row two was actually where we got assays in the seven and $800 range out of the uh, gravels. Uh, let's see here. Looking for our holes. Uh... You see, that's row one. Uh, here we go. This hole right here, 2B, or sorry, that would be 2A, 1A, and B is in the roof. These four assays came up between $600 and $1,000 per yard. Again, you can see we're on top of that bedrock. We get into some really rusty stuff, and that manganese, and you can see the quartz there. You know... Still learning about this place, so I'm doing my best to explain it. But, uh, yeah, we're almost to the uh, back of the tunnel here. We're going to just move a little bit ahead. This is probably my favorite part of the tunnel, most interesting part. This is where the best assays came out. This is what we call row one. And when you look here, take a look at all that manganese there. There's your bullseye ring. This is all manganese in here. We could, I, we could mine this just to coke steel. But uh, we're getting loads and loads and loads of microscopic gold out of this stuff. I'll try to give you guys a really good look at it here. You can see my drill holes.
Yeah, we've been hard hard at work in here, you know, like getting all sorts of samples. Uh, we're getting thousand dollar a yard here, man. This is why we need an investor. So, who wants to help us? We put in a lot of work. I'll get Peter to move over, just get a shot at the end of the attic here. As you can see, they could have still still kept going. The material still looks very similar. And actually, where we're sitting right now, this is where I located a uh, sawed-off shotgun 410, about 100 years old, with scales, crucibles, there was carbide lamp here, even an old set of scales. I've got them all cleaned up and in my display case now. But I want to point out that manganese one more time. Are you noticing all that black ore here? People are sitting on something pretty here. You know someone who wants to help me? Nugget King would be real appreciative. Probably make someone very rich too. Anyways, I'm going to sign out here. I'm just going to give you a little exit shot uh, so you can see how far into the earth we are and we're going to bid you adieu. Uh, about 66 feet, that's the entrance to the tunnel. We'll talk to you all later. I hope you enjoyed this video. Okay, uh, part three of uh, the added video. I just wanted to show uh, potential investors. That's our proximity to Colmont, approximately a mile away. If you look down there, you can see the power lines. That's the highway. Nice convenient power. You can see where my truck's parked at. It's only about 30 yards from there. And uh, we're gonna take a little walk up here. Uh, this is uh, an area that I believe was eventually uh, was cleared out at some point for either logging purposes or I don't know what. But they could notice on the ground how much quartz is kicking around. You know, rusty. So you know, I don't know, man. That amount of quartz around with bugs and rust and all the other things usually is a great indicator. Whew, a little bit steeper here than it probably looks on camera. Anyways, the reason I'm bringing you here is to show you we're only about 100 feet away from the added at this point, not even. We have this wonderful staging area. Up the hill over there, about 100 yards, is where we found uh, one of the first pits that the old man from the 60s was digging. And about 200 yards uh, to the left and 200 yards up the hill, there was a second large pit. Huh. But yeah, this is a really nice area. Up here, you know, we could stage, uh, it's already cleared road in place this is where we could stage our mine have our equipment our office whatever else we need parked here <coughs> this is all our claim too this is all our ground both mineral and placer and it goes for two kilometers that way so lots and lots and lots of ground to explore here That's the Tulumine Valley down there, the rice farm. Um, go a little further down the trail here. Now I don't know if uh, we're gonna run into any of this here, but if you uh, see that big gully on the mountain near the top over there, right along there, uh, that's the Roney Channel. It's an ancient tributary of Granite Creek and it was discovered about 10 years ago and uh, the people up there are pulling about uh, two mil a year now apparently uh, it's rumor i don't know if it's true uh, we got some quad roads here i don't know where they go to and uh, yeah we haven't explored most of this claim we've just focused around where we made our discovery and then put a big buffer zone around it so anyway that's the added claim that we're looking for investors on Plenty of timber to get things done, too. I'll talk to you later.